Ladies and gentlemen, now I find, like to ask your attention for our DS lecture, Professor Enoch Lagerdijk from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Mathematics and Computer Sciences. He will introduce you into the deceptive and sometimes seemingly realistic world of virtual reality. Professor Enoch Lagerdijk, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Thank you. So that certainly brought me into the mood. If I were one of the buildings of TU Delft, I would worry about my future. The labs and classrooms that have served students and teachers so well over the past decades are clearly falling out of fashion. Look around you, dear audience, and you will soon realize that the size of our campus is shrinking. A naive passerby may suppose renovation and rebuilding, but maybe there is a deeper meaning to all of this destruction. Maybe the University of Tomorrow no longer needs a campus. Quite recently, Theo Delft opened her first buildings in the virtual campus of Second Life. Living and teaching in the virtual world doesn't require buildings of concrete, glass and steel at all. The hardware of reality is being replaced by its software counterparts, built on the terabytes and gigahertzes of modern information and communication technology. Of course, the demolition of the buildings of the TU Delft and the rise of its virtual campus is just a metaphor. A metaphor for the increasing virtualization of education, social structures, society, and maybe even of ourselves. Until recently, we were restricted by our physical hardware, our body, and our physical location, our reality. But thanks to the rise of Internet, computer games, pseudo-identities, and immersive human-computer interaction technology, these restrictions are becoming less and less relevant. Virtualization makes it possible for individuals and information to coherently exist while being dispersed in time, in space, and also in identity. We increasingly use this capability not only to hang around in a worldwide computer network, but also to browse around and to discover information about almost any subject one can think of. The world behind computer screens and game consoles often attracts us more than reality. We should realize that our university is confronted with a generation of students for whom interaction with the Internet and virtual worlds are a part of their reality. For these students, the world of web, Google, chat, Wii's, Role-playing games and three-dimensional displays may be, well, may, may be a more genuine world than reality itself. A world that is moldable through the glasses of digital technology. A world in which they move around oh so easily. For the teenagers of today, the line between reality and virtuality is vague at best, has become increasingly intangible, and it's sometimes completely absent. Something or someone that cannot be found on the Internet does not exist. The University of Tomorrow must obviously act upon this mega-trend. TU Delft can be found on Second Life, and therefore it does exist. But it's not just the campus that is being virtualized. The way in which students and the academic community interact is also changing radically. E-learning environments, email and chat, provide 24-7 interaction between students and teachers. On demand, anytime, anywhere, streaming, electronic classes, furnished with exciting, high-tech, visual effects, substitute stifling classrooms. The digital and highly virtualized university of tomorrow is slowly replacing the university of the past. Imagine a completely virtual TU Delft in Second Life with virtual classrooms in which we find only virtual students and virtual teachers? It's obvious to me which tomorrow lies ahead of us, thanks to the information and, te in the information and communication technology, everything and everyone has been connected. 
A pervasive digital infrastructure has been created that serves as a fertile soil for blurring of the line between reality and virtuality. Thanks to modern ICT, we feel like digital gods creating highly desirable virtual worlds that are vastly superior to our reality. Virtuality is hot and reality is not. As you can see. But then, virtual worlds are inherently distorted reflections of our reality. Distorted to the point of being completely unreliable and untrustworthy. How well are we aware of that? Internet and virtual worlds do invite us to forget about that distinction. Come on. We all know that the reflection of reality is not reality itself. I have debated so before. Two and a half thousand years ago, I said to my students, picture men dwelling in a cave. Conceive them as being restrained from childhood so that they remain in the same spot, able to look forward only. Picture also a fire burning higher up and at a distance behind them. Between the fire and these prisoners is a road along which a low wall has been built. That is all we see, my students said. See also, I said, Men carrying past this wall all sorts of objects that rise above the wall, as well as human and animal shapes. <laughs> That's a strange image you speak of, they said, and strange prisoners. Like to us, I said. For do you think these men would have seen anything of themselves or of one another, except the shadows cast from the fire on the wall of the cave that confronted them? How could they, they said, if they were compelled to hold their heads unmoved through life? And again, I said, would not the same be true that objects carried past them? Surely, they said. And I said, if they were able to talk to one another, do you not think that they would suppose that in naming the things that they saw, they were naming the passing objects? Ah, by Zeus, they would. Right. Then in every such way, such prisoner would deem reality to be nothing else than the shadows of these objects. Quite inevitably, the shadows of the objects are their reality. Consider then, when one was freed from his restraints and compelled to turn his head around, what do you suppose would be his answer if someone told him that what he had seen before was all a cheat and an illusion? He would be speechless. Do you not think that he would regard what he formerly saw as more real than the things now pointed out to him? Far more real. And that is exactly my point, my dear Plato. Welcome to the year 2008. What brings you here? <clears throat> I am uh, here to help you thought, sort things out. You seem a bit confused about this reality versus virtuality thing, right? Well, maybe not confused, but I do feel uneasy about the growing blurriness between reality and virtuality. We are becoming increasingly dependent on information and people in virtual worlds of whose trustworthiness I know nothing about. Please! Internet and digital technology have brought you so much. Uh, but hang on, this uh, 21st century technology that you are now talking about is very much beyond me. Uh, give me a second to fix that. Uh, I feel so modern. Do I know you? Well, you know me as well as you know yourself. And the audience definitely seems to know us. Okay, well, so... You were saying what? Y yes, as I said, Internet gives us access to a worldwide virtual library and worldwide communities. I mean, the size of this library is mind-boggling. Five billion web pages, one billion photos, and a hundred million users always online. The world is at your fingertips. What more do you want? Yeah, that is very true. But do we consider the downside seriously enough? Terabytes of information may be available, and millions of users may be available and present in virtual worlds, but have you ever tried to find precisely that piece of information or that individual that you're interested in? That's what we have search engines for. Just Google a little and you're done. Yeah, that is true, but what if Googling doesn't produce a result? If you cannot find a particular subject with Google, then the immediate conclusion is that nothing has been written about it. If you cannot find a